friends and welcome to Did You Art, the YouTube channel for people who don't take themselves or their art too seriously. So as you guys know, it's October and that means it's Inktober. And I'll be completely honest with you, I am not doing Inktober this year. I've tried it the past couple of years and I usually get to about day three or four and it's done. But I do like the idea of doing some kind of challenge in the month of October or really any month, to be honest. So one of the YouTubers that I watch is Lori Marie Jenkins. She is a mixed media artist from Vallejo, California. I'll go ahead and I'll link to her channel down below. But she is doing this October challenge of creating a mixed media board book, an altered book. And that sounded like a lot of fun, something that I could do and really stick to. It's not super big. Um, it's just like a little kitty book. It's got probably, let's see, one, two, three, four, like five pages in it. So I thought I'd show you guys how I did this first page right here. And then based on your response, I may upload some more videos of me going through this entire book and then finishing off the month with a flip through. So let's get started. Okay, so this is the block book. I picked this up on eBay for like a couple bucks, honestly. Um, it's not vintage or anything, you guys know. I don't like to really take apart any vintage books or something that has a lot of history, especially if it's like a rare book. I try to find some that I know have been mass produced and it's not like some rare gem that I'm about to ruin. So I found this on eBay, just a couple bucks. What I've already done is gone through every single page and sandpapered it uh, using just some sandpaper that we had downstairs. I don't know the grit, but it was pretty um, substantial. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to try to get as much of the shiny finish off the pages as possible because that is apparently gonna help with all the matte medium and the paint adhering to the page. So I went through and I just sand paper the heck out of each page. And then what I did to help reinforce the spine is I just used um, some tape. This is just like Gorilla Glue tape we had lying around. Um, Lori Marie had used, I think it was gaffer's tape, gaffer tape, but I couldn't find any. Um, the store, our local store didn't have any, so I just went with this and hopefully it works. So I went ahead and I taped the spine down. I didn't tape every page. It's not really sticking well there, I'm not sure why. But I just did every other page to reinforce it. Um, I don't know how well that's gonna work. I might go through and do every page as we get into this, just depending on what happens, but that should be fine for now. Now, as far as um, color palettes go, I wanna keep it kind of Halloween spooky. So I'm going to use this Mars Black from Liquitex. This is acrylic gouache. I also have the fluorescent violet, violet, which I think is really gonna be pretty up against that black. And then because it's Halloween, we have to do some orange. So I'm gonna use this acrylic ink in, what color is this? Scarlet. So I think that that's gonna be a really fun color palette to work in. I'm primarily gonna use it for the base of each page. So what I think I'm gonna do now is go through and essentially just distress all the pages. Just get it crazy with cool backgrounds. I'm gonna use this Tim Holtz Ideology paper pad. Um, this just came out for his Halloween collection. It's called Abandon. And the paper in here is beautiful. Look at that. I mean, it's already got the texture printed in. I mean, look at this. So pretty. So I'm gonna use this for the um, background of each page. And then I'm gonna play around with using some ephemera and some magazine cutouts that I have. I'm thinking about incorporating owls into it just because owls are amazing and they're my favorite. Here's like a bat. And then I also have this uh, Tim Holtz Ideology ephemera kit. This is again from his Halloween collection. So I might be incorporating some elements from this into it as well. Here's a bigger pack and it's got some really cool things like these um, cardboard frames, like that's so cool. I don't know, it's just gonna be kind of a do it as we go and see how it turns out and see what I'm feeling. So let's get started with doing the backgrounds.
So because we're gonna use um, this paper, I decided as the main background, I'm gonna use Mod Podge to secure it down. Now, typically I will not use Mod Podge in art journals or altered books anymore, thanks to you guys, because what I was finding is when I was using it, the pages would stick together. It would be like, and they just would not come apart. So because we're gonna use it on the bottom to adhere the paper to the page, I think we'll be okay. And then I'll just use matte medium as we go forward with the other focal points. So let's just try it and see how it works. Okay, so you can see that I was trying to secure another another little piece of paper here just to kind of reinforce the spine. It did tear. I'm just gonna leave it because I'm gonna go over this with some paint and I don't think it's gonna show. And even if it does, I'm not mad about that because this is gonna have kind of a vintagey, distressed look to it. I might actually sandpaper this even more, um, but we'll see. I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. So let's go in with some stencils to make this background even more interesting. I'm going to use this Liquitex acrylic gouache in the fluorescent violet because I think that's going to pop nicely against this kind of dark blue background. Is pretty nice. Let's do it again on this side, shall we? Okay. That's looking cool. Kind of wish I would have done it over there, but that's okay. I'll put something over there too. Now, let's let that dry for a hot minute and figure out what else we're gonna do to this background. So while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm actually gonna go make some tags that we can put in little pockets throughout this book.
Okay, so I went ahead and made some of these kind of distressy torn, and then some of the other ones are just perfectly rounded little, you know, tags that you would get, um, like tickets almost. So just to give it some interest, some different textures, I'll probably go through and distress these with some Tim Holtz ink to make it look really worn and vintage. Ooh, that would be a cool pocket like that. It's a little too small. Um, yeah. Okay, let's see how our journal page is doing. So that's drying nicely. I'm not sure if there's anything else I want to do to this background just because it's pretty much already done for me. I might go through and do all the other pages and then come back in and have fun adding all of my little focal points. Yeah. Okay, I lied. I'm actually going to add some more paint and some more color to this background just because this isn't doing it for me. So let's see what we can do. Let's bring in some Mars Black and let's use that same stencil again and see what happens. That's looking a little bit better. I still want to incorporate some orange in the background though. So I'm going to wait for that to dry and then I might do an orange wash over this. We'll see. So what I think I'm going to do is a super, by the way, can we just take a moment and appreciate how cool that looks? <laughs> I don't have any tattoos, but wow, that's pretty cool. Anyway, back to what we're doing. I'm gonna use this acrylic ink and just do a super diluted wash over this. And then what I might do to give it a little extra shine is I have this Glimmer Mist from Tattered Angels. I think I found this on Zulily. I've got it in kind of like a uh, gray black and I think I have it, yeah, I do, in this really pretty um, kind of yellow orange color. So I might add that afterward, we'll see. Well, that's looking a little more spooky, don't you think? I'm kind of liking that orange in there. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to shine it up a bit. Maybe down here. So I totally lied while I was waiting for this to dry and also my phone to charge because I started recording with like zero battery. I went ahead and I put the background down for the entire book. So I just picked out some different paper that I liked. I've already started to add some paint to it, some texture. Um, I actually decided that this is not my most favorite thing in the world. I might try to take that up if I can or cover it up or something. So here I put the tape on top of the paper. Here I've just got it in the back. I think I prefer that. I did the same thing on this page, same thing on this page. So we'll work with these two pages. We'll figure something out. Um, but for now, what I think I'm gonna do is go over this with some very heavily diluted gesso, just some white gesso. And before I do that, I'm going to tear out some old scrapbook paper scraps and just get them laid down almost like, um, I don't know what they're called. I, I can't think right now, 
but you'll see what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay them down, um, but not keep them there permanently. I'm going to pull them up after I gesso so that we, we have a nice imprint of this background. So let me show you. There, see? That way it's got kind of like this spooky cobweb spirit realm layer <laughs> to it. And it doesn't completely cover the background either, but it does add a little bit more interest. So now I'm just playing around with some different images to see what is going to look really cool. I like that. And what I was thinking I could do is I actually took this old image, I think it was of Coco Chanel with her sunglasses, and I put the head of an owl on it. So it's almost like the owl has the woman trapped in the cage. And I'm thinking what I can do is use the packaging that the Tim Holtz um, little ephemera came in and have that be there almost like she's behind the glass. If I was really ambitious, I could put some shakers in there, maybe some glitter, but we'll see. For now, I'm just gonna play around with the layout and see what's gonna work best. So off camera, I was looking at this and it just didn't feel done to me. So I went ahead and I cut out some um, flowers out of this piece of scrapbook paper that I had laying around. And I'm gonna add some flowers around the border. So like put that one there, thinking put this one here. And then this came in the ephemera kit, but it was just white. So I went over it with my distress ink and made it kind of orange and um, rust colored and I think I'm gonna put it here like a little tab and then cover it up with this little flower so let's try that
And that, my friends, is a wrap, as far as I can tell. <laughs> I might go back and doodle a little bit more on it, but I'm just gonna walk away and come back to it with fresh eyes. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And in the meantime, don't forget to art.